you, Mr. McGinnis. You can go home now, I guess. Uh, just so you know, it's not on the agenda, but just as a point of information, uh, since Anthony brought up about the town report, the town report, we did not print as many copies this year. The town report will be available on the website, is available at the High Plains Community Center, in front, in the Senior Center, Town Hall, Library, all those places, and anybody who wants a copy mailed to them, we will gladly put one in an envelope and mail it to them or hand deliver it to their mailbox, either way. Um, and we cut back considerably on the amount of books, uh, the amount of complaints I received last year uh, for people, why do you send us this? Why, you know, they, a lot of people just didn't want to be bothered. So we're trying it, and we're going to see how it goes. There is a press release going out on it. Um, but, uh, you know, so many people review these things on the web now and all that uh, we're giving it a try. And like I said, it will be very well publicized that it's available, and we gladly will send it to anybody who does wish a copy. And it will still be way ahead of the game financially. So the it. web will be updated because the yes, last it, I look it, it will be absolutely years, be updated. No, I already took care of that yes sir so what you're basically saying is that not what you're saying is that everyone should not expect the annual town report to be Correct. delivered to their mailbox and if they would like it right. the press release will have the number and we will mail them one or the people who are out at town facilities are more than welcome to pick one up but wasn't it budgeted to go out did we do any budget? Um, we had cut year? it back, but yes, but uh, I find that wasteful whether it was budgeted or not. Yeah. Um, so this is something we're trying, and we're going to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Hey, you we know, did, we did it once yeah. before, and we went back to the other way because there were well, a lot of complaints the other way. So uh, well, we're going to see what happens. That wasn't with me, and so right. we'll see how it goes. But just that's just a point of information. Anthony jogged my mind when he brought that up. Um, item number seven. I know that Mr. Martino and Mrs. Zyman are anxiously awaiting to consider and act on bids for phase two computer equipment for the Orange School System. You have in front of you the uh, bids. This is that four-year program that we instituted. Last year was the first year of it. Uh, I think it's four. It's 100000 a year for four years. Yeah, I know, but originally when I started this, it was 100000 a year for four years because last year's was 112. So uh, this this is uh, what we're looking at. Um, Mr. Martino has joined us at the podium, who's the curriculum director for the Orange Board of Education. Would you like to give a little explanation, or would you like to field their questions, sir? Uh, I can give you a little bit of a summary. It is three years, not four years. Okay. Uh, and under the uh, the town the ad hoc capital planning fund, the Orange Board of Ed has been provided with $82,000 per year for each of three years towards the cost of computer replacements. Uh, the 2007-2008 fiscal year will be the second of that three-year commitment. In the first year, this, this current year, 2006-2007, the, uh, the Board of Ed purchased one server and 112 desktop computers. We still need to purchase four servers and approximately 231 desktop computers. And, and that's what we hope to accomplish in the next two years. ACES, the Area Cooperative Education Service, which is our regional uh, service center, reviewed the, the specifications from the vendors that submitted bids. Both vendors met or exceeded the expectations on the, the bid specifications. So ACES has validated both of their submissions. Of the two submissions, Dell Marketing was the low bidder and are being assured by ACES that their, their bid is in compliance. We're requesting that Dell Marketing be awarded the, the contract for the second year for the purchase of the computers. Uh, if, if it's approved tonight, our intent is to purchase the computers and then the ACES staff this summer will do the actual installation in the classroom so the, the boys and girls will have the full full year benefit of the use of those computers in the classroom. Very good. And, and, and we're hopeful to get uh, 112 computers this year 
and another server. And just so you know, too, the town uh, utilized this bid. We needed uh, quite a few new computers as part of our upgrade system and town services, and we uh, went to this vent to the vendor of bid and. Uh, we were given the same courtesy price that the Orange Board of Education uh, paid last for this previous year, just so you know. Any questions? Any discussion? Any motion? Move approval. Second. Anthony Selectman Nastry, second Selectman Goldblatt. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. You're all set, sir. Thank you. On behalf of the board, thank you very much. Now that takes place after July 1st. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Item number eight. This is something that was on my list of things to get done. Turkey Hill Road is in horrendous shape, has been for several years. And uh, so Mr. Lieberman went out to bid on this one. And uh, this is uh, for milling and repaving. And actually, one cus one bidder is going to do the milling. And another co customer here, another bidder, will do the paving. I believe the paving, is that the same one we used for uh, Conair Road? Conair Road? Yes. And how great. does that look now that we've gone through a winter? It looks great. Okay. Uh, this, this bid also went on the internet, and I, since I thought it was going to be well over 100000 it went to Dodge reports, and we, we were lucky we got three total bids and one partial bid. Now, Garrity only does the milling, and two of the other <coughs> firms used him as their milling, and it's in, they're in, his cost is in their option uh, A price, and uh, they're all try I guess they're all trying to make a little money using him, because when I put, put the... Uh, Empire's uh, paving only option C, together with uh, Garrity's uh, milling, it came out to the lowest price. But if you look at the others, they're all higher than the to the combination. And Garrity did the milling on Peck uh, Peck Lane last year. If you For remember the city of Milford. Well, yes, Milford, and then we we yeah, approved. Yeah, the city of Milford hired him. Yeah, they yeah. hired him, and uh, he did a good job. Looks like a good combination. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll move uh, to approve. So, second. Okay, Selectman Nastry, Selectman, uh, which one? Goldblatt or Openquist? I'm not sure. Uh, this is nice because this did come in, I think, Ralph, in your 125 yeah. set aside oh. for this, and the actual is $98,090, uh, and it has a contingency to yeah. go with it. So it, at this point, it's 107890 um, but still quite a bit less than, uh, yeah, so that may be a little more money that we can put towards the uh, hopeful parking I have for out in front of uh, High Plains. Now we had 20000 that we found, and now we may have a little bit more. There's, yeah. There's a, yeah, there is a so. reason that this, these bids came in so low. This, for some reason, this, this period is low for, for the contractors. They're going to do it. It's going to be done in two days. They know that they can't send us a bill until after July 1st. They're going to do it scheduled for the 25th and 26th of June. So we take advantage of a, a lull for them. Yep, so we'll notify all the residents yes. over there. I already spoke to uh, some that don't have city water to see if any of them have intent. There's only, I think, four on the street, four or five that don't have city water. and. Nobody seems to be tying into city yeah, water. Yeah. I asked that question before we go through this process. That's kind of what led partly to the demise of this. The town of Orange rebuilt this road, and a couple of years later, the water company came through up Turkey Hill Road and cut it up and put a water main in, and that started it. And then after the time frame was up where you had to pay the big money to the water company for tapping in, the eight or ten years, whatever it is, then the people started tapping in here and there as it went. So... It kind of became a mess, so we'll have to notify the residents that it's going to happen. And uh, all those in favor? Wait, wait, Jim. Oh. Jim. Go ahead, Ralph. Go ahead. All right, I'll start. <laughs> I guess I'm a little concerned of that we're doing work in one fiscal year and paying for it in another fiscal year. 
to prove money. It's not uh, going to be it's not going to be billed. Yeah, it's but it's not a problem. Uh, well, about four days. It's just your one fiscal year versus another fiscal year. You're doing work in one fiscal year and paying for another. I, we, we've done this. I'm not sure that. I don't see that a problem. It's not. A, it's. It's not a rollover. It's it's you're, on you're using the you're using a next year's funding. It won't it's not money. It's paying out this year's funding. July first. I wouldn't it make a difference, Ralph, where the where the where the bill comes in. The bill is dated. If if we had money in this year in 2007 and we just didn't pay it until 2008, that would be fine. But I think we I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm in in the in your regular cost accounting standards. You can't do that, but. Municipal accounting, I'm not sure. Well, as Mr. Sharon Zelly tomorrow. I will. I think I think we better check on that. Just I, well, mean, I wouldn't want to see us getting tweaked. That's fine. We, well, we, we've ordered trucks ahead of time. You ordered, you ordered, but you didn't. Well, work starts. Well, yes, Mitchell. A uh, uh, separate question. Um, there's work being done there now to replace all the catch basins. Yes. Is that not part of this no. whole project? No. no. That's that's our own men. It's our well, own people. And and well, we're gonna. We're we're going to get some help because they they can't finish it because of vacations. Okay, but it's not so going to be the money is elsewhere and it's not a, a biddable. It's not a large enough project to bid. That, that I'm not I'm less concerned about that. Just concerned about what Jim's statement about the hundred twenty five thousand. Did that hundred twenty five thousand was put away for this project include the catch base no. re replacement? No, no, it didn't. No. Okay. Now the catch basins are sitting down by it's the top. It's just the tops. It's just the tops. Okay. Any more discussion? Now this is well. This is, the, all you're voting on is redoing the road. The date of the road, is, you know, being redone is not before you. If we'll check with Mr. Cheranzelli, if that's a problem, we'll push it off a week. All you're voting on is the uh, the work, the price well, for the work, amount money, right? that amount of money. Right. That's what you're voting on. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? <laughs> Unanimous. Okay, Mr. Lieberman, don't go far. And item number nine, to consider and act on bids for a storm, storm drain in an easement from Tall Timber Road to North Lakeview Road. Now, as I have to ask you, we already have this easement. We own it or it's deeded or whatever. The easement is ours now. The, the We had a small easement and we've taken a 30-foot easement and the property owners have signed off on it. It will be recorded in the, in the town clerk's office tomorrow. The, all the documents we have. So we have a 30-foot easement now. Okay. And that was sta that's standard requirements. All right. Uh, and you got two two bids for this one? Yes. Other Doing people. Doing good? We got two? Two. Uh, okay. And you're recommending it be the one Billy Grieger. Yes. Um, this is a tall timber road takes there's a catch basin at the end of the road takes all the water and it goes down into an open asphalt ditch down the hill to Lakeview and it's washing out it's washed out the properties and at the same time the silt that comes when it gets washed out ends up in the wetlands down at the bottom of North Lakeview Drive uh -oh. so we're, we're accomplishing two things the one property owner has shown me bills that he's paid out over the last three or four years for putting back the soil so this is just this is just uh, material. I mean, labor, other than landscaping and uh, soil erosion control, we'll we'll provide the pipe and uh, the catch basin that has to, uh, the uh, manhole has to go in. I think, <coughs> I think I gave you copies of the plan. Yeah, do you, do you I'm not. I'm confused, Don. When you, give right. the, when you give the price of the 6077 yeah. compared, uh, compared to the 7088 yeah. and uh, I don't understand the, um, we could say $500 by, by We're not. Is, is that in minus the, uh, in the no. landscape and then he's going to charge you if you have to do landscape? He's going to have to. There's no question. We promised the homeowners that the, 
the property right, is that all included in the six thousand? Yes, it is. If you add the four, I see, I see four thousand four hundred ninety. That's right. And you go down, and there's and a three. Yeah, if you add them in, then do I come up with the six thousand? Yes. Seven, yes. Seven, you I didn't should. Have. Yes. Well, there's a contingency with part well, of Well, yeah. This, okay. yeah. This, and I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, we were out there, I and can't read his writing yeah, that clear. Uh, well, there may be a little savings. We're not sure yet. We're looking, still looking at it, but uh, this would be the ups, the upside cost. Okay. Okay. Um, any more? That's all right. They're all right. This any is coming out of Town Aid Road, by the way, because it's a road roadside drainage project. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Who do you want? W. R. Grieger from Bethany for six thousand seventy-seven dollars. That's correct. That's correct. I'll make that motion. Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh, for right budget of seven thousand with the contingency. W. R. Grieger, yes, Bethany. I'm sorry. For seven thousand with the contingency. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. All right, I'd Thank like you. to ask for just a five-minute uh, yes. break here. Uh, our secretary periodically has a coughing fit. Make, just make a note for her. I'll make the motion. I, I did. He did originally, yeah. Second. Joe Blake did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right, in the break, we thought your coughing fit was getting the I best of you. I withdraw my motion. Okay. <laughs> We're back. We're still with it. I think Roy did. Yeah, he would do it too. Okay. Well, so now somebody else. Now Warren Molson's got it back there. Okay. I item <laughs> could be in that room in there. Item number 10 is to consider an act on ratifying agreement between Town of Orange and CGI Communications. This came up uh, a couple months ago. Mitchell asked for this, uh, and then Vincent was away, so it was got, and there was another reason it got delayed a month. Uh, what this is, is this is a company that uh, is doing a video on the Town of Orange as a promo. It would be linked to the town website. Um, it starts out with uh, the what they used for an example was uh, Tim Stewart from New Britain is the one I saw or Bristol where is he where do you go New Britain um, and it starts with that and then they do um, they filmed uh, low moderate and expensive real estate we went to the elementary school I think we used uh, Peck Place uh, the middle school the high school uh, we were on the post road, uh, stores, shopping, uh, Racebrook Tract, uh, Fred Wolf. Uh, they, they put a whole video together of your town. Does not cost the town of Orange anything. It is sponsored by uh, solicited um, money. I find it a, a win to enhance our uh, we went to Pez uh, Candy for manufacturing and a couple other industrial sites. I find it a, a win to enhance our. Uh, we went to Pez uh, Candy for manufacturing and a couple other industrial sites up there as part of it also, and it enhances the town for people who click on to the town of Orange, whether they're thinking of looking for uh, residential schools. Uh, you know, it highlights your community. They did the town green, you know, that scenic view with the church and all. Um, it's something that's rather interesting and it doesn't cost us anything. We, we uh, agreed with this some time ago, didn't we? Well, in theory, but Mitchell wanted to, uh, since uh, he felt there's an agreement. It's kind of a professional service is how I looked at it, but then that was uh, questioned. Okay, so this so. is just a formal agreement? Yeah. Mitchell. It's of uh, really basically one, well, two concerns. One is that I think the Board of Selectmen should approve this uh, and being brought to us. I know it's being brought to us after it's done, which is fine, but as long as we're, we're no, getting it. No, it wasn't it. done at the time. It is now, right. but it's still right. not done yet. But my, my, my major concern about this, and it's really something I think that Vincent needs to look into, is the, <laughs> he takes out his pad. Um, what this leads to is advertising on a government website. And I have concern as to whether that is allowed with the GOV um, web, um, I, don't know, I don't know what you call it, the, the suffix 
uh, on our website, the GOV, and you know whether whether that it potentially can cause any trouble for the town. We have basically been devoid of any kind of commercial advertising on our our town website up until now, and part of this. Because I met with the individual um, from GCI Communications who approached me from a business standpoint. Um, besides the fact that I find it very expensive, I was also concerned about just the idea of having company logos on a town website. Obviously, on a Chamber of Commerce website or the even the Economic Development Corporation website, I can see that being more acceptable. I'm just concerned about it. I'd like you to look into it to make sure. Can, can, link to it. Yeah. Can I can I just ask some follow-up sure. questions? So yeah. I can yeah. Sure. Uh, does the Chamber of Commerce and or the Economic Development Corporation have a link from the town's website? Yes, I, th I think and we do. Do yeah. either of those uh, organizations advertise local businesses? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, but uh, I'm concerned about it. the link is not, I mean, we can link to anything in the world. Right. I mean, if we want to, my, my concern is that our website, the official website of the town, before you navigate away from our website, you know, the one that's got the GOV. Um, uh, attached to it, whether that's a allowed and b whether it, whether I know we use this word all the time sets any kind of precedent. We don't want to get into. I, I just want to make sure, from an issue standpoint, when when it's researched, that it's uh, is the the chamber uh, and I, I haven't navigated all right. that much between the chamber and the town's website, but I, the town's website would be a .gov website. Right. If I linked to the chamber website, would that be a .com? I believe it's .com or .org. Dot com. Dot, com. Yeah, dot com and the uh, uh, economic development dot com. would be a dot com. Yeah. So I guess uh, my, my question or my main, main focus would be whether or not this would be indistinguishable from that. Because if there are businesses advertising on the chamber's website or the corporation's website and you link to those sites from the town's website, well, that's what I'm not sure about whether, right. whether 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 when you go into the town website, whether you end up linking to a GCI Communications, whatever we're going to call a website, or whether it's going to things are going to appear on our website. And I just have a concern about us being a municipality looking like we are promoting individual private uh, sponsorships. You know, it may it, it just could, could give the wrong impression uh, uh, from the, our the, town. The purpose of this whole thing is to sell orange. It promotes the town of Orange. Yeah, so it's, it a, it's a direct business. benefit to the town of Orange but that people look at the facilities that Orange offers and bring their companies in. They pay 25% of our tax bill. So, uh, you know, is this uh, a bad thing for a municipality to do? Not, not with, no, I think we may be confusing. Not what Jim's talking about in terms of showcasing certain, certain schools and certain businesses in town. But to actually have that those particular businesses or other businesses logos up there looking like when you link when you click on the town of Orange website that you could be you know it, the implication there is that the town of Orange is suggesting that this business this restaurant versus that restaurant is part of the town of Orange or this real estate company versus that real estate company or or this whatever printing company versus that printing company mm -hmm. because they happen to pay to be bond there because that's what's paying for this I mean Jim has signed a contract with with um, GCI communications that doesn't cost the town anything but believe me what they're doing for 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 Jim and for the town is not coming at no charge the charge is being being borne by the businesses and what they're getting out of it is getting their logo uh, to be linked I mean and there's there's a secondary reason I asked that. I think it also pulls away from things that both the OEDC and the Chamber are trying to do. You know, you're going to the same businesses now, not twice but three times in the town for their sponsorships but, but that's on websites. Up to the, I think that's that it is up to the business thing is up to the business. It is up to the business. Business, business, that's not up to. And, uh, but I'm more right, concerned us. about whether there's an implication that looks like the town is endorsing this particular business because if their logo appears there if it, if it appears by navigating away from our site I don't have a concern right, I don't that, really that's it. that's my question because it was my understanding from reading this and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna point you to the fourth bullet point okay. underneath the paragraph that's the town of orange shall provide the following mm -hmm. and it uh, agrees to place a graphic link on orangect.gov website homepage so I I 
interpreted that as you're going to be linking away from the the town's website to another website and it would make it identical to a chamber or a corporation now that might so I just want to make sure from a from a uh, research standpoint is your concern if the local businesses logos appeared on the town website there would be the concern or yes. is con okay yes. so if there's a link and the uh, the logos do not appear on the website but rather on a link site right the concern is avoided my personal concerns okay. avoid. I don't know how anybody else feels about it but okay. that's true yeah okay so I, I just want to make sure from that's the way I understood that's the way I read it was linked okay. all right. well, not that it was directly on our site okay. is how but I I'll, understood it I'll just make sure that. of it that's I'll look all into that. okay thank you select because of Creo has a question we're not going to start seeing pop-ups on the uh, town uh, website are we I don't think so okay that would be a concern I, I don't believe so Okay, um, so then do we want to act on this uh, or do you want to wait for uh, attorney's return? It's your call. I would prefer to wait for the attorney's return. You've already signed it, Jim. I mean, I appreciate you bringing it back up to us at my request. I think at this point, we just wait for Advenia to get back to us to clarify okay. that. So That's at this good. point, no action. Thank you. Very good. Uh, there, excuse me, there was something in there. It's very small print. Wasn't there something there that has to be back within a certain date? Oh, we're all set with that. Oh, okay. We're all set. I considered it professional service and, uh, you know, no clause. Okay. Item number 11, discussion on flooding on Surrey Drive, Selectman Goldblatt. This is really a uh, uh, Selectman Goldblatt and, and I think Cousin Creole and Blake also. The three of us um, toured the Surrey Drive area um, this was last week with a number of residents and we just you know just after that meeting with the residents it was a concern mostly from the residents as to what the next steps are because from our perusal there could be any one of a minimum of four actions that could be taken to start to alleviate the flooding problems over there so Jim the, the reason I wanted to put it on the agenda was I know that at last time we discussed this, there was um, some ideas that the town was going to go forward with something, but I wanted to make sure that we were going forward with something. What what we are going forward with? I don't know if Mr. Lieberman is still here or not, no. but um, in making sure whatever specifications we're going forward with are are in the works, so that in the drier part of the season, uh, we might be able to take some action. So it's just the. Uh, and I don't know if Joe or Roy have anything to add to that, but just to make sure that we didn't you know, lose sight of that and, and hopefully can do something to address the situation out there, which does seem very grave uh, for some of those people um, by the dry part of the summer. Uh, Jim? Sure, go ahead. Mitch, uh, I got something on my email yesterday or something about this, and I was surprised why three people went and not six people. Uh, usually when we go look at some place or do something we do it as a board not as three people from one party versus three people from the other party not going I know it's a political year and I hate to put this out as a, as, as a political activity and I'm, I'm sure it's not a political activity because I mean I wasn't there I don't know what transpired but it seems very strange that Three people went. Three people didn't go. Three people. Three, three people didn't know about it. Well, it was it wasn't a political activity. I believe it was an original email that went out to a number of people. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. I received an email from one of the residents. Um, I thought everyone else did too. I responded to it. Uh, I was invited to go out there, and the question was, you know, if anybody else wants to join you, I talked to uh, Selectman Blake and Cousin Creo. Um, you know, not trying to get into a quorum and get into a, a meeting situation. Um, that's all. I mean, started with myself. I mean, I could have gone out there myself, but I figured, you know, if we had a couple other people, I, it's, well, I, I'm not. I'm not bringing up anything political. I just want to make sure that you know, we as a well, board voted last time to go forward with something. It's just a follow up to make sure we go forward with it. That's all. Well, I have. I don't have a problem with that, and I think we should go forward and do something. I feel for the residents up there, but I think when half the board goes out on something like this, and the other half doesn't even know about it. I mean, I didn't know about it until I just happened to get uh, an email sent 
to me as a as a, a courtesy copy from something or it was an attachment or something I don't remember exactly what it was now but all of a sudden the day before we're going to meet I, I hear about this that something happened a week or so ago I don't even know the exact date of it but I'm, I'm just a little surprised and 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 I'll say a little hurt that I didn't get invited and I and I talked to Tony and I know Tony didn't get invited and Jim didn't get invited and the thing about a quorum we've done things in 24 hours notice and that's all it takes to post is 24 hours notice that we're gonna have a special meeting and if you want to make it a special meeting just as we did walking in Ewan farm mm -hmm. that was a special meeting and we all went and I just think well I don't want to say anything because I think we're, we're in a situation where we got elections coming up in a few months and, and I, I take it as uh, and I don't want to start something where three people go and three people don't go in the future I think if we're going to do something we do it as a board six people not three people and I don't it doesn't bother it bothers me whether it's because it's one party but I don't even want to see three people go and and the other three don't go just because we can't make a quorum I don't think that's what this board is made of we've been here for almost two years as a board and I think we have worked very well together most of our votes have been unanimous on things and I don't want to start seeing something coming along that's a, a situation that I'll be very uh, very cautious on how I uh, reflected that statement uh, uh, just getting back from vacation I had just heard about it myself and I I do happen to agree with you wholeheartedly and um, to make it a clear a clear playing field I would suggest that the three of you get a hold of the neighbors and go on the same tour that we did and I wholeheartedly agree with your assessment of it the answer is it for us to do the same thing you guys did <laughs> that's that's ridiculous look I'd like to refer you to the minutes of that we just approved it says here on this subject a petition was presented to the Board of Selectmen selectmen asking for a solution to the flooding problems that have been causing significant damage to homes and property on Surrey Surrey Drive this was a petition how many signatures were on that petition I don't recall but quite a, a few quite a few yeah okay you know the Maple Dade Road Ro Maple Dade Dale Road area was also affected by the flooding there were many residents in attendance from both streets residents Dr. Lawrence Messina Jane Abston Marcia Oliver Ben Wyckoff Barbara Vescovi spoke on behalf of the residents in this neighborhood about the flooding problems in the area overflowing of the Wepawong River Wepawong and Racebook rivers along with block sewers have caused extensive damage to homes and property. They each asked the town's help to clean out the drain pipes and replace with a larger size when needed. In some areas, a berm had to be built or a catch basin has to be installed. The first selectman stated that the town was aware of the problem in this area and he recently did a tour of these streets with members of FEMA. Steps will be taken to resolve the problems that exist. Now, I didn't learn anything more today than I knew then. This was decided and reviewed as a board with six members present. We all felt the right. anguish of the people that came before us. Now, what this looks like is that three cared more than six. The other six. You know, you independently. I guess, Tony, next, next, time, next time I get a request to go tour something, I'll just go on my own. Because that's how it started. And I, I felt that it, was, it would be more prudent instead of having, you know, everyone go out. I asked a few other people to join me. That's all there was to it. Well, you're, make, just, you're, making a, you're making a lot more has, out of this than there is. Perception of a you're making a lot more out of this than there is. And I think the important thing is that the people being affected by this are that there's something being done. And, and last time... Well, this you know, states that we're going to fix the problem. Okay. And as a member of this it board, is, it I'm, is, I'm going to vote in favor of fixing this okay. problem. It is, it is June, and I think by August, if we're not doing something, we let another year go by. That's all. G gentlemen, so, so gentlemen, what are you going to do? Have another meeting? Between gentlemen, could, 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 <laughs> could, could, you, could you three of you people... I'm sorry, Anthony, I interrupt you. Uh, I apologize, but I'm going to say what I'm going to say anyway. Could the three of you do me a personal favor, contact the neighbors over there, and take, let them take you 
on the tour that we went. I would be very, very happy with that solution. Um, I'm sure the three of you can get together. I'm sure the property owners over there would be only too happy to um, to show you what we saw and what, what their concerns are. And that way there, all six of us know and have seen the problem with our own eyesight. Uh, I request that as a personal favor from the three of you, and it becomes a, if you want to call it a, a clear pain field, please. Uh, let me ask a question. Did you have any technical expertise, any engineering help? Any? Uh, Tony, can I just step in the, just for one second there? I, I missed last month's meeting when all the residents were here. I was very interested. You know, I didn't get to hear the stories. I know Lawrence Messina, and, and I've talked to him through the years about the problems they've had. I didn't get to hear the stories from the rest of the residents. Uh, I thought it was worth taking a look at. But also, I'll say, you know, from a technical standpoint, and I don't claim to have any engineering or hydrological expertise, but I was 23 years on Inland Wetlands Commission and chairman for part of that. Mitch was on that commission for a lot of years and uh, chairman also. Uh, I, you know, I'll tell you, there was no, maybe the, the, the grouping was unfortunate. There was absolutely no political agenda, agenda that I saw or, or heard. Uh, uh, perhaps, you know, probably in retrospect, it was unfortunate the way that played out. Uh, but I, I, I didn't see that there was any intent for anything other than, uh, than information to be gleaned. Or I did not. I did not go over there, honestly, with any political intent. I, I give you my solemn word on that. The three well, of you would make me very happy if you three of you could get together, request a meeting with the residents. And Anthony, no, I'm not an engineer, but I want to want to play things fair. And I believe uh, you're entitled to go over there. Please request it, and. Um, Make a senior member happy. I, I don't have to be convinced that a problem exists. This problem has been going on for years. It just has never been satisfactorily resolved. I want to see this action that we decided to take taken. I agree with you. Get the technical you, expertise I agree, I agree in you. here I to agree. get this thing fixed. I you know, agree. And I don't need a dog and pony show, to be honest with you. To, to, uh, I, I, I'm not telling to you acknowledge that this is a serious problem that we shouldn't stop, we should start fixing and not playing with. What I'm saying to you is I totally agree. Uh, we don't need a pony show. What you said earlier, it had all the earmarks of looking political, and therefore you did make that statement. I'm telling you it is not political, and to make it a fair playing field, as you, uh, we all know the problem's there. The question isn't becoming, we didn't quite, you, our good colleague is not questioning the problem. He's questioning the fact that three of us went there. And therefore, I would like to see the three of you go, and six people have seen it. I didn't, ha I didn't have to see it to know there was a problem. When those people came here, my heart was greatly saddened to hear the problems that they have had with water. So go over there and take a look at it. It's not a pony show. Somebody thinks it's political. It was not political. Clear the playing field. Do yourself I, I say we concentrate on fixing the problem. Jim has toured the area, so has FEMA. We agree that the problem exists. What we need to do is fix the problem. I absolutely agree with you on that. And that's where my sentiments lie. I guess my, I guess my concern is this problem has been, I think, seven minutes ago, been going on, or one of the one of people said eight years or something. Let's fix the problem. Why are we let it go for eight years? Why hasn't this been taken care of before? I guess that's my question. I wasn't aware it was such a, a deep problem. I knew that. Well, I'll tell you, from I went, to I went to school with one resident over there, a Yale graduate. I've known him for 40 something years. Lives on the street. He has never once mentioned that problem to me. The first thing I said to him after meeting here, I won't give your last name, I said, Fred. 40 something years, we've 50 years out of Notre Dame High School. You and I have been known each other for 50 years, and you, you know I'm in, in, on the Board of Selectmen. You never mentioned a problem to me? Never. So I can't answer those questions either. 50 years we've known each other. 
one of one of the people I came met, met, said they've been trying to get the problem fixed. They've been talking. They've been talking to town people for the last eight years, and you know, uh, no one ever talked to me either, Joe. Okay, I I know there's a well, I, I know there's a problem over there with the Weppelwog and so on, and I didn't realize it was that bad until these people came. Let's and fix it. Let exactly. I, let's, I think. Let's I think that uh, I'm not going to let you labor on this all night but I do have a couple thoughts in my head on it which I think I need to say. We have a couple areas in town where flooding is, a few areas in town, where flooding is becoming a problem. We have several large, for our area, rivers and streams, they're all really big streams, some hold the name of river and some are brooks. And they are all picking up more water than they can handle. This is a problem that we're facing whether you're on the Indian River, Race Brook, Wepawag, the Silver Brook, Davis Brook, and whatever other ones there are that I may forget. I've made this statement repeatedly when I was just a farmer in town, when I was on the Board of Selectmen in town, and I've made it as first selectman. People think that I'm against development and I want to only see green grass and trees. That in itself is a wonderful bucolic thought in the head. But if you understand the problem that we are facing, you are allowing development on sites that are marginal. They are adding more water, which eventually finds its way into the brooks and streams. I don't care if they put the most advanced uh, detention little basin in on the back of their property or underground galleys or anything. It is putting more water in. There are areas in town, and I have good friends in this town, and every one of you know them that are property owners. And I am not going to sit here and say they can't build on their property. But you need to understand some of these pr pieces of property cannot handle generating more water into these brooks and streams. This is a problem we're facing with that one over there. I was out there when they had the problems with the FEMA representatives. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to deem our area uh, as badly damaged as some other areas. But we have areas there that need to be corrected now that have needed to be corrected for many years. I have to meet with the Army Corps of Engineers over that issue that we all talked about in regards to the power lines. When I meet with them on that issue, I fully intend to ask this Mrs. Lee, who is probably who we're going to meet with, some questions, or Ms. Lee, I should say, I don't know what her status is, when I can set up some meetings with the Army Corps with them just to know what my rights are and what I can and can't do as the town of Orange. This should have been done several years ago. It wasn't done. The problem has gotten worse. This is not a new problem. It's the, one of the biggest reasons that I pushed for purchasing that property down the street that I'm facing much criticism for. I said it before and I'll say it now as I sit here. I have full intentions of digging two detention retention basins on that property for the reason of the people downstream on Indian River. Now, when you guys decide to stop playing politics and we all work together to resolve some of these problems, it will be done. But to take three people and not the other two who hadn't been on that walk, maybe it's not political, but it sure as hell appears political to the people you're meeting that Oakenquist and Nastry were not part of that. That is inappropriate and unacceptable to me. I have to face these people. I will answer to these people. If they want to question, they come and they question me 
and I will meet with them and tell them what we're going to do. But when we start running around as little factions and fracture this Board of Selectmen that is up for the good of the town of Orange, all people, this board isn't going to work properly. I am very disappointed that this transpired. And it is not a problem to post a special meeting. And it will not happen in the future. If it does, my voice will probably be much worse and my temperament than it is right now. You play as a team and we work as a team for the good of all residents of this town. You want to undermine, undermine publicly. Don't go behind my back because that's what happened on this maneuver. That's exactly what happened. Stop the backbiting and start working for the good of the community. Stop yammering away with little bitty questions as non. Work for the good of the town of Orange. Those people over there deserve better than that. It will be resolved. I don't know what it's going to cost the town of Orange yet, but that one woman, Mrs. Vescovi, got up, Mitch, that went last month, and she said, I'm the first person in eight years that listened to them. I've been there. I've seen their problems. I will solve their problems. Handle it as a group. Don't make faces and roll your nose over there, because I'm only repeating what the resident said, yeah. not what Jim Zioli said. Well, that's fine, Jim. You know, as, as a selectman in this board, and as you guys are all selectmen, you get communication from residents. And that's not, I'm not going to ignore communication from residents. You guys want to know every move I make? Fine. That's the way, you know, uh, you know, you talk about nitpicking behind. Go back to the minutes for the six years that I was first selectman, Jim, when you served on this board. You know, it works both ways. But the point is, the point is that I responded to a constituent that I believe, maybe I'm wrong, that I thought had I thought had reached out to to other members of the board. Okay, I responded. A picture's worth a thousand words, and going out on site is worth more than that. I'm sorry you all feel offended, and the whole business of making things political was made tonight. There was nothing political about this except to find out what was happening with this issue. That's all. These people are concerned; they have a right to be concerned, and that's all there is to it, Jim. <laughs> Well, then when a resident asked you, where's uh, Mr. Zioli, and the response is, well, it would have complicated things if another person was here because it would have created a quorum, I don't know, Mitch, that doesn't quite go with what you just said. All we had to do was post a meeting. One resident asked you that, and that was your response because he called me up and asked me why I wasn't there. And I, I didn't make any... There was nothing said about your absence, Jim. You're the one who said you've already know, you knew the area, you've been out there in that area. That's I right. hadn't been for some time, and I don't think the other selectmen were either. That's all. That's right. Uh, right Mr. There. Chairman, I think both sides have discussed I think this, so. Uh, pretty nicely, and I would like to move on to Very uh, good. Item number, number 12. 12. Thank you. Very good. To consider and act on tax refunds for the month of June in the amount of $2,885.93. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Very good. Committee reports. First committee is school buildings. Selectman Cousa Creo. We have a couple uh, items on here. Jim, we uh, obviously we went out to bid on. Uh, window replacement at, at uh, Peck Place and uh, doors at Turkey Hill. Uh, as has happened other times in this, uh, <laughs> with this same particular bond, uh, we had preliminary estimates that we could get both of those projects done for the funds we had uh, available. We knew it would be close and, uh, and uh, we didn't uh, I see that. Uh, yeah, we knew it would be close uh, to what we had left. We didn't know what, uh, how much, whether we could get them both. Well, obviously, the, the two numbers came in. Uh, the lowest number was nearly what we had uh, left in balance. We're not going to be able to do both. Uh, at, at the meeting last night, that building committee, we uh, voted to proceed 
with a replacement uh, for the exterior doors at Turkey Hill School. Um, there may be, there's a slight contingency fee left with that $157,000 bid. Um, we've got about $166,000 left available. We may be able to do some parking improvements at Peck Place, but the Peck Place windows came in at $195,000. see that. Um, Jesus. There were some, you know, there was asbestos mitigation in there uh, of about Where? 70,000. Turkey Hill or Peck? Both. Yeah. Asbestos caulking. Oh, okay. Minor stuff. Right. Very minor stuff. But minor stuff to the tune of $70,000 in okay. mitigation. Uh, you know, it's something that could, the inside of the buildings could be tarped and taped and, and all the work could be done from the outside, but it's still 70 grand uh, out of that 166 uh, that we had left. We had at a pre, a mandatory pre-bid meeting, we had seven bidders do the walkthrough. We got one bid in uh, for the go. both projects. Uh, the question, uh, we went back to the architect at Castle Booze and said, you know, what happened here to the other six guys? And it was, the project is too small, the timetable is too short. Um, Project's too small. Uh, yeah, the mitigation was uh, uh, an issue and, uh, uh, you know, we have too much work to consider something like this. That so it, seemed to be a problem. That seemed to be a problem. Uh, it, it's, it's frustrating at, at the very best, it's frustrating. Uh, but it, it would cost to put this, uh, of course the other thing is to try to get it done during this summer period. Uh, the cost of holding it till summer uh, 08, uh, we put a, uh, um, uh, an option on the bid uh, and that was gonna add 25 to $30,000 to hold the same project the next summer. So we voted to go ahead with the uh, that which we could afford, which was Turkey Hill Doors. Uh, oh. Any questions? Wow. So that, if you do this $157,266 job, you still will have approximately 166000 left. No, this is 157 of the 166. Oh. We have oh. a contingency of about seven oh. and a half percent I thought here. You, meant you still had some left. Uh, it's it's. So this is basically the red end of your money. This is it. Yeah, so but we may get to do, do some of the parking lot improvements at Peck yeah. Place. Minor. Maybe. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for a motion for uh, Turkey Hill School door replacements of one hundred and fifty-seven thousand two hundred and sixty-six dollars. Yes, sir. That's the motion you're making. Okay, we have a motion by Selectman because of Creo. Is there a second to that, please? Second. Very good, Selectman Goldblatt. Any more discussion on that? Yeah, Jim, I do. Yes, Ralph. Uh, when I read this, I went back and looked at... Somebody's got their mic on, I think. Mine's always on. Getting feedback. Um, I went back and looked at a breakdown of the budget that uh, Al Pulo gave me back in September of 05 and uh, he laid out all the projects that were in there and there's nothing in there about doors or windows and That's with with the uh, projects that are there at that time he said there'd be 266,000 available um, what bothers me a little bit is there were a number of things in that bond issue that still haven't been done and we're not doing those, but we're going with the doors and the windows. Well, so this project has kind of been a, um, I, it's kind of alive. Uh, some things have developed that okay. were worse than others. Uh, I guess they have some rotted out steel doors on the exterior of that facility and all is just part of where this comes the, from. I exactly. The, you know, the roofs that were done uh, initially as part of it, uh, the uh, it, it, the, the laundry list that we started with, and I, I asked this question several times on through the process, you know, the bond had several items listed. <laughs> can we 
go ahead with these other projects. These other projects were deemed to be, <laughs> both of them were deemed to be more important than, uh, since we had not enough money to do all of it mm -hmm. after the initial, the modulars went, uh, I don't know, 80% over what was initially mm -hmm. figured. Uh, we did not have enough, of course, to do all of it, and these projects were brought, these projects were brought to the uh, fore as the most critical. Uh, we were very hopeful that we were going to, we were certain we were going to get both of them, because we had estimates within the last six months that we were going to get both of these pretty close for that remaining money. Um, Obviously, we, we got uh, torpedoed on uh, on the bid process here again somehow on those estimates. Okay. Uh, I've asked, I asked uh, Pam today when I was going through this uh, for an accounting of where we stood. And she told me tonight that she, she didn't have the numbers yet. Well, those come to both. They're at the Board of Ed. Yeah, well, she's, got a, she's trying, to, trying to compare the numbers that she has versus the, the numbers that you're talking, Roy. And I would, I don't know how critical that this has to get done tonight or today, but uh, I'd like to, I'd like to wait to make, to make sure that we've got the right amount of money left before, well, they before they we go out and spend $150,000. Because I know the budget is very, very tight. Well, that, I know um, you do too, Roy. So, I mean, I just don't want to put us in a position. Uh, I, I think they won't be able to do this if the um, accounting of it showed any discrepancy below what you need. I presume that uh, the Board of Ed's number on this is true and complete. That's what we've gotten. I mean, Al Pulo does a, a, a report. very complete job every meeting uh, on this um, I mean, he is the finance director of the Board of Education, so I, I do have to uh, allow this judgment to fall into their lap. He and uh, Pam and Al do work together, but, um, uh, you know. To, the, to go back to the timing part of it, um, if there's any chance of getting it done during the summer break, we have to we, we, we've got to I think you can award it. it Ralph with the stipulation conditional condition yeah yeah if you make your motion if the motion is made that way that uh, you know the number is true and correct fine all right and add that to the motion that uh, yeah okay any more if there's any money left over any possibility of trying to do some of the windows at Peck? I can tell you through experience. I tried to close one yesterday, and I almost put my arm off. It gets to the point where the teachers, the custodians, even the pupils have to get up on the radiators and close those windows. They are absolutely a disaster. The problem with that would be, Joe, is that the even though it's window caulking that contains that asbestos, the asbestos mitigation is the bucks. would be beyond what's going to be left over in that bond. It, 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 just, seems, it just seems the wind is, uh, they're in a track. One came completely out of the track on me yesterday. Good thing it didn't fall out and kill me. Uh, isn't there any way... Uh, Kate wouldn't uh, be happy. A lubricant? Uh, WD-40. WD-40, a lubricant. Try something to slide them. They ask any teacher. And they're afraid to open them, let alone they can't close them. Maybe a lubricant uh, of some particular nature in this day and age of lubricants uh, it has to be some kind of a product that would at least help, at least help them slide a little bit. So, so you're not taking your arm off. Oh, they're metal. Aluminum. Aluminum. They're aluminum. Aluminum uh, bites a, after a, a while. They're so old they don't even slide. They have lubricants. Joe's right there. They have graphite. for it, so you can try it. All right. Use his mic next time. Here's a mesomort. It died. What did you say? It died. I didn't know I passed away. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 
Okay. Any more discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, this motion? Aye. Opposed? I'm staying unanimous. Very good. Capital Planning, Selectman Oakenquist. Uh, no, Pension Board, Selectman Nastry. We had a meeting on May 21st, and we reviewed, we had asked Mutual of America to uh, make a presentation on the 401A defined uh, compensation plan and the 457 government retirement plan being offered to uh, all new employees uh, as of March 1st. Um, we had asked uh, fiduciary investment to uh, give us a price on their analysis of these uh, Mutual of America funds, and they gave us a price for the analysis of the uh, asset distribution allocation, the asset allocation and the uh, uh, performance statistics, they wanted $12,000. So we decided to ask Mutual to give us, the board of the pension board, their analysis of their performance and uh, asset allocation, and we'll review it before we uh, ask anyone else to review it. We also went over the, um, the pension plans, and everything is in order there. The pension funds show an average gain of 1.73% for the first quarter which translates to almost a 7% return for the year. Uh, Beautiful. Under old business, uh, we, uh, we still didn't get the uh, report from Milliman on the um, um, actuarial report, so we're asking them to make a presentation at our August meeting to cover that. That's okay. it. And I'll give this to Ann to help her. Oh, now I'm going to fly. Here, hand it to me, Joe. <laughs> yeah, really. 7% return. That's a nice return. Yeah. That's uh, very nice. Okay. High Plains Community Center Renovations, Selectman Blake. I have no report. Okay. Now, you know in the uh, budget that passed, there is money in there to start the study of the uh, South Wing. Yes, there is, and I'm hoping... One of these days, you're going to tell me there's enough money in to do the parking lot, increase the parking well, lot. Well, we keep finding these. I know you. You know, we had a little me. from last year, and now <laughs> Turkey Hill Road, we might find a little bit more, so it, we're gaining on it. Okay. Personnel, Selectman, Goldblatt, and Oakenquist. I don't know if you want to speak here, or we do have an executive session item for this as well. Okay, yeah, you have a couple. Was there anything else besides those two salary situations that w we didn't take action on the others, do we? Okay, so no report at this time. All right, at this, yes. Before we go to executive session, I'd like to change the uh, items two and three to say to consider summer camp salaries. We're not going to act on anything in executive session. True. To consider summer camp salaries. He's right, yeah. And to consider non union salary increases. Okay. No. Okay. That's very good. All right. Um, so we will be going into executive session. We have three items tonight for executive session. Item number one is to discuss and review the map setting forth specific boundaries of Mary L. Tracy School property. Uh, to be acquired. This is uh, something the Board of Selectmen are looking into uh, considering in a um, transaction with Mr. Frank Rogers. Item number two, I will recuse myself on uh, item number one, uh, just so you know, because I am the adjoining property owner. Uh, item number two is to consider the, the uh, summer camp salaries of the park and recreation employees. And item number three is to consider uh, the non-union employee salary increases. Those are the three items. If there is any action, we will come back into public session and uh, uh, then take action at that time. Would you like to take a five-minute uh, recess or not before going into executive session? If we'll not, for five all right. I close this public session at this time at 9.40. And we will return here at 945 to take up executive session. Thank you. <clears throat>
You ready? Yep. Okay, we're going to call this meeting back into regular session at uh, 1050, 1051, 10.50. Uh, three items were discussed in executive session. The first being to discuss and review the map setting forth specific boundaries of the Mary L. Tracy School property to be acquired. I had recused myself and left the room on that, being the adjoining property owner. Um, so I will ask uh, Selectman Oakenquist to uh, report on that. Uh, there's no action taken at this time. Okay. Very good. Item number two was to consider the salaries of the summer camp workers for the Park and Recreation Department. Do we have a motion uh, on the salaries for the summer camp workers? Mike? I would make a motion to approve them as presented. Okay. Okay. Um, with the exception of the one which I will check on to find out um, if that but one person is in the right one. category or should have been moved to the top. Okay. Hearing that, is there any more discussion on the camp uh, employee salaries? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Good. Item number three was to consider an act or consider non-union employee salary increases. Uh, we have discussed it, and the board made three changes to this salary sheet. One being <coughs> one being that of the uh, first selectman salary, which would take effect after the November elections. I have recused myself on that. Hey, Jim, particular item, yes, Mitch. Excuse me, just out of, just out of uh, courtesy to those on that list. I mean, I, yes. I think we're. I, I would. Let me try to make a motion first. I'd like to make okay. a motion to approve the uh, non-union salaries as discussed in, in executive session and agreed upon, uh, and a list that'll be published uh, by your office um, after after motion. I don't think it's necessary to discuss okay. the individuals changes since, no, since okay. the information was confidential to begin with. Okay. Well, I was just going to say there were just three changes, yeah. okay. and I wanted it noted that I was, I recused myself on that one particular okay. one. Okay. So, so that would be my motion. <laughs> hearing that motion from Mitch. I'll second it. Second. Is there any more discussion on this topic? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay. Being that I see no more business to come before us, you do have a list of uh, information items there at the bottom of your sheet for all of you to review. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. All in favor? Aye, I say we adjourn at 1055.